Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for October 8th, 2020, recorded around 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a wide look across the tropics right now, or, or more so specifically focused on Hurricane Delta, uh, again, this storm has now become a stronger storm once again in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. As you remember, across the Yucatan Peninsula weakened and then has been moving consistently towards the west northwest over the next uh, over the last couple of days. Now it's finding itself here several hundred miles to the southeast of Texas, and this will continue to make that turn towards the north tonight and then eventually northeast early tomorrow and set its collision course for southwestern. Louisiana. This is a major deal for those areas that were impacted by Hurricane Laura uh, already only a couple of months ago. So this is a very uh, serious situation uh, with a potentially powerful hurricane set to make landfall there in only uh, the next about 24 hours or so. Now I can see here on the close-up, this is the infrared satellite loop. And a couple of things we want to point out here. First of all, as you remember, over the last several days, we kind of look at the wide view for a second. We did not have a clear defined eye structure on uh, satellite imagery. Now today that's changed. You can very clearly see an eye, kind of a, a very small eye trying to poke out here from time to time. Now, if we take a look at the IR satellite, we can also tell that there's this little indent here of very dry air, and that is the eye indeed trying to clear out. Uh, but there's also a problem with the convection, and we can kind of see that we don't have a very symmetrical look in the convection right now. Now, we do have this new convective burst forming on the north side. We'll see if this is able to rotate all the way around, and this is still a rather elliptical kind of shape right now. We don't have a very circular um, eye wall kind of appearance. Uh, we do know that, of course, the eye wall is open on the southwestern side, uh, which is obviously, if we point towards the southwestern side, it's going to be right here. So that's the southwestern quadrant. It's opened on that side, which means that's, that's one of the main reasons why we haven't seen very significant intensification today, because this eye wall remains relatively open. It's not a uh, it's not really a circular eye. It's very elliptical in nature, and you can see that even looking at the IR satellite. Now, again, we'll see if this convective burst can rotate around, but what this is telling me is that because this convection so far hasn't been able to rotate all the way around the center, uh, this maybe suggests that we're still looking at potentially some shear impacting the storm and forcing it not to be able to rotate around. Um, so that is something that we're going to have to watch because if indeed uh, that this is able to rotate around and close off that eye wall, uh, there is a chance that there might be more significant intensification uh, as we progress throughout the rest of today into tonight. Now, if we look here at the visible satellite imagery, uh, we can see again much of the same picture that we have this eye structure becoming more apparent. Uh, you know, obviously deep convective bursts that are forming on the north side trying to rotate around but can't do so. And that's partly probably because of the southwesterly shear that is preventing fully in the up shear direction. And that's very important that as time continues, we may not actually see this rotate all the way around. And that might be one of the things that's really hindering a very significant organization of the storm right now. But regardless, it's still a very strong storm at the moment. Now, if we look here at the track forecast, uh, this is for Hurricane Delta, the graphical plot here, uh, and everything is basically following the Hurricane Center track. Uh, but you can very clearly see, again, the storm right now is situated over the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, over the deepest and warmest waters uh, right now. This is the very deep ocean uh, right here. Now, as we go forth with time, we step out here to 24 hours from now. This is expected to be a major hurricane. And again, this is more than likely going to be a daytime landfall event. We haven't had one of those in quite some time. Uh, so this is, kind of, um, this is kind of indicative that we're going to start to see the storm uh, intensify a little bit more. 
but also, again, landfall would be daytime, you know, daytime going into evening. So it's not going to be one of these overnight landfall events. And uh, hopefully that will be some good news uh, for, you know, people that are still deciding to live down there and, and not evacuate. But uh, you can see very clearly hurricane warnings are in effect from eastern Texas all the way through portions of central and east central Louisiana. Tropical storm warnings extend all the way out to near Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans. Tropical storm warnings south of Houston. And again, the reason for this uh, large area is because you can tell here from the recon plane that we have a relatively large wind field. And we can very clearly see that even hurricane force flight level winds extend out very, you know, very kind of way away from the center, very far away from the center. And uh, that is indicative that we're going to have a pretty decent storm surge on that southwestern side or on the eastern side rather and we can see that from the storm surge forecast put together from the hurricane center that storm surge values could get as high as 11 feet uh, in places like vermilion bay and the rockefeller uh, wildlife or refuge holly beach sabine pass sabine lake could see three to five feet of storm surge and even down towards Port O'Connor High Island, Galveston Bay could see one to three feet of storm surge in that general region. So this is a very big problem, and especially on this right front quadrant in that northeast sector, this is where you're going to see those uh, higher numbers in terms of the surge values. And uh, we could also see this inundate far inland into some of the, uh, almost like with what we saw with Hurricane Laura, with some of those river floodings, this could push a lot of that water, that storm surge into these rivers. And we could see major river flooding, you know, even 50 miles downstream or so uh, from the actual landfall point. Because again, this is still a very strong storm, uh, you know, and we can see here, from the recon plane that, that was just in there uh, a little while ago that we had flight level winds here approaching 110 knots or about 125 miles per hour and these surface winds here on the or the you know SFMR readings were you know roughly at about you know 90 to 100 miles per hour so we're getting in that range where obviously we have a very strong storm and that the the storm size as well along with that wind is going to drive all of the storm surge into that right front quadrant of the storm and you're going to see these values come up probably i would suspect maybe even as high as you know 13 to 14 feet of storm surge that could actually occur and again well inland too because again this is a very flat area down through here very flat area and in you know today's later video i'll go over the topography down there but a very flat area and that is going to cause these rivers to swell up very quickly we saw that with hurricane laura so this is a very big problem and we're going to see you know these rivers eventually flood you know upstream from you know the landfall point so this is going to be a, a very big problem uh, for those areas so take the you know take this very seriously even though this will be weakening at landfall it's still going to be packing a punch and you know sadly this area was already impacted very heavily by hurricane laura you know only a couple of short months ago uh you know and now we're going to start to see the the very same thing set up here with hurricane delta uh by tomorrow so very dangerous life-threatening situation now if i look here at the h wharf this is the 200 millibar winds in the atmosphere, so this is kind of predicting what the top of the atmosphere is basically looking like in, in terms of the wind. And we can very clearly see a couple of things to point out. First of all, starting in the Gulf of Mexico, closest to the storm, we have this upper level anticyclone right now that is across the Gulf of Mexico, and that is helping to ventilate our storm quite nicely and helping to create a little bit of an outflow channel. Now, one of the things that has been occurring, though, is we can also see here that we have this trough that's digging in across here. This is now beginning to lift our storm 
uh, more so towards the north today, and then we'll bend it north uh, east tomorrow. But what's happening is we have shear coming out of the southwest and through here. This is a kind of a jet maximum region or a um, kind of an exit region on the front quadrant of this trough. And what this does is creates and picks up shear out of the southwesterly direction. And as the storm turns northward, that's going to be the main focal point uh, as to what is potentially going to weaken the storm. And we can very clearly see that by tomorrow, now pressures are down to about 947 millibars. So they, they are down there. They are still strengthening. But you can very clearly see we have the southwesterly shear beginning to pick up over top of the storm. And as the upper level anticyclone becomes kind of displaced, it creates its own shear environment as well. And the storm actually weakens pretty significantly once it gets right up near the coastline. And because of this southwesterly shear, that's going to start be to be kind of impinged on the storm uh, by the time we get into tomorrow. Now, the other thing that we're looking at here is the sea surface temperatures. And again, the storm right now is sitting in a pretty favorable environment in terms of the sea surface temperature profile. Uh, generally, 20, you know, 28 to 29 degrees Celsius waters in through here. So it's, you know, in a decent area right now. And if, if it can close off that eye wall, rapid intensification is possible. But you notice what's sitting right to the north. And we talked about this over the last couple of days, how this area has shallower and cooler waters. And this is uh, in response because of a cold front that passed through earlier uh, last week. And you remember that kind of was the same thing responsible for shearing off gamma. But now that same thing is actually that has helped to create a little bit of a cooler patch of water in through here. So as the storm moves northward, we can very quickly see that the storm enters 20, you know, 25 to 26 degree uh, ocean temperatures. And now suddenly we go from an, a kind of a third dynamic environment, supportive of intense hurricanes, to quickly one that isn't so supportive of intense hurricanes. And we can very clearly see because 26 Celsius is what you need to support hurricanes. Uh, but for really intense hurricanes, you know, you need that 27, 28, 29 degree water uh, for the most part. And you just simply aren't going to have that up in this region. And uh, now, again, if this takes a little bit of a turn, you know, further, you know, west and, you know, we'll kind of draw that in a little bit better. If it comes up maybe further west, something like that, it does have a little bit more of a third dynamic, you know, third dynamic favorability. So this might a uh, kind of, you know, th this might have a, a chance, you know, to intensify a little bit more if it comes further west. That's certainly a possibility and again, the cone is, you know, kind of out there to include eastern Texas as a possible landfall point. But we're really kind of narrowing it down somewhere near Vermilion Bay, Cameron, Louisiana, uh, around that area, sadly, uh, once again. But we can see as the storm crosses over this very cool, uh, kind of shallow uh, water, it very quickly gets upwelled and the storm starts to weaken from a combination of dry air, shear, and the lack of supportive sea surface temperatures. So, uh, you know, all in all, this is still going to be an intense hurricane by this point, but it's going to be weakening, but that's not going to change anything. That, that does not change a single thing in terms of impacts. Again, the storm surge is your number one. Storm surge and freshwater rainfall flooding is your number one concern in this instance with your, you know, wind threat and, you know, tornadoes, everything else. These are all threats associated with the tropical cyclone. And even if you are inland by, let's say, 20 to 30 miles, that river flooding is going to be a big problem. We saw it with Hurricane Laura, Hurricane Sally, uh, you know, over there across portions of, you know, Mobile, you know, and the Alabama-Florida border. We've seen this enough times before to know that this is going to be a big problem. Obviously, Laura, you know, created river flooding of its own. This is going to be a big problem, and it needs to be taken as such because this is going to be a high-impact event, uh, especially near and just east of the landfall point. And I want to point this out. Even if you are near Mobile Bay, Lake Pontchartrain, even uh, near the mouth of the Mississippi, you could easily see uh, four to six feet of storm surge over there near the mouth of the Mississippi, two to four feet for Lake Bourne and, Lake, and uh, those areas in Lake Pontchartrain, 
and about one to three feet of storm surge expected for the Mobile Bay region. So it is going to pile that storm surge in even as far east as the Alabama-Florida border. So this is going to be a very significant situation uh, as this approaches uh, tonight into tomorrow, probably making landfall sometime tomorrow afternoon or evening. Uh, so this is going to be a very dangerous and life-threatening situation is going to be a major concern, right? So that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and early evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more later this evening.